Hello, Professor. My name is Mohamed Usman. I'm from the Computer Systems Lab. The topic that I had chosen for the research in this course was to propose a machine learning based method to automatically classify the modulation schemes. Here is a little introduction of uh, automatic modulation classification. Well, it is an important part of the non cooperative communication systems. As you can see in this figure, that AMC block is present at the receiver's end and it is present in the inter intermediate location where the signal is received. And this received signal is then sent to the AMC block where some pre processing is done. And with this pre processing, the important features of the signals are extracted and then sent to the classifier module. This classifier module classifies the type of modulation being used at the sender's end. Uh, and this information is then sent to the demodulator, which demodulates the signal. So the, in the cognitive in, in radio and the adoptive communication, the transmitter can freely choose the modulation type of the signal. And uh, conventionally, the knowledge of this modulation must be there at the receiver so that the effective and effective demodulation could be performed. So, and the purpose of uh, automatic modulation classification is to omit the need of uh, this prior knowledge and give the leverage to the receiver that it may be able to identify the type of modulation and demodulate the signal effectively. In literature, there are two types of uh, automated modulation classification types. One is the likelihood based and one is the feature based. The likelihood based methods are based on the likelihood function of the received signal and they are tend to they tend to achieve a very good optimal solution. But the problem with using the likelihood based method is that they suffer from high com uh, computational complexity and they also require some prior knowledge uh, about the uh, type of modulation from the transmitter. On the contrast, the feature based method depend upon the feature extraction and the classifier design. And they are assumed to obtain a suboptimal solution and the complex uh, the computational complexity is much less as compared to the likelihood based method because they do not require any prior knowledge about uh, the type of modulation from the transmitter. So since we know that the prior information required by the likelihood based method is often unavailable, uh, so the researchers have paid more attention to the feature based methods, which includes two uh, essential blocks. One is the feature extraction and the second is the classification um, um, classifier design. So the, for the purpose of feature extraction, various uh, methods have been proposed, including the signal spectral based features, wavelet transforms, uh, multi-cumulants, k-means clustering, k-means, k-center, and fuzzy k-means. Similarly, the classifier design uh, have been adopted using the support vector machines, K nearest neighbor, genetic algorithm, and convolution neural networks, and sparse autoencoders. In this uh, uh, classifi classifier list of classifiers, the support vector machines and K nearest neighbors and genetic programming, they all require <coughs> some features and using those features they uh, make the classification but uh, the advantages of uh, using convolutional network and the sparse encoders is that we do not need any uh, features from uh, the signal and we can directly feed the input signal from the 
um, receiver which has been received and it it has the capability to extract the necessary features and also perform the um, classification within the same block so the the need of uh, a separate block for feature extraction is omitted in the case of convolution neural network and sparse autoencoders So therefore, uh, considering the advantages of uh, convolution neural network, uh, I had decided to uh, do some research on using the deep neural networks, uh, which since CNN is the uh, type of DNN. So I would like to give you a brief introduction about what DNNs are. Uh, the DNN or the deep neural networks have shown to outperform the conventional algorithms uh, which required uh, expert feature engineering and they uh, they can be considered as the large approximators and they are generally comprised of a series of layers where each layer represents some transform of the from the input to the output activation based on parametric transfer function uh, with some set of learned weights. So the DNN, uh, they they are they have been effectively used for uh, the classification of uh, images or voice or speech and uh, many other uh, applications. And uh, they have uh, they work on the principle of gradient descent opt uh, optimization algorithm. And, and work on some kind of a loss function uh, which can be uh, defined within the algorithm so for the for the task of multi-class uh, which uh, which is the case uh, with in the signal modulation classification uh, multi-class uh, uh, classification uh, can be adopted for uh, in which the objective function is often the categorical uh, cross entropy and for a classification task, probability distribution uh, is usually uh, a softmax of the output of the classifier network. So, Professor, in my first draft, uh, I had written that uh, I shall be implementing mobile nets, uh, which is a lightweight version of convolutional neural networks because they use depth-wise convolution and uh, the they require less computation cost uh, as compared to the conventional CNNs. I had this plan because uh, uh, there is a need of uh, low power, uh, low computation uh, algorithms in the low power devices of uh, IoT and 5G, uh, probably the sensors. Uh, but uh, due to some constraint, uh, including uh, lack of my knowledge and uh, lack of uh, uh, computation resources, I could not uh, implement uh, mobile nets. Uh, rather, I in this study, I have uh, proposed a modified version of the CNN by including one, uh, two extra layers of uh, convolution and dense uh, in the uh, ConvNet. Um, and that actually helped me in gaining some better uh, performance results as compared to the existing algorithm, uh, which I'll be uh, discussing in the later slides. Well, one of the fundamental requirement of uh, machine learning algorithms is to train them on sufficient data set. I found two publications uh, which were written by the same authors. Uh, they proposed convolution neural network based uh, automatic modulation classification um, uh, algorithms and they also constructed uh, their own data set and later they made the, those data set publicly available. So uh, one of the data set is named as RML 2016.10A uh, which contains around 200,000 samples of uh, uh, analog and uh, digital modulate, digitally modulated signals. And the other data set is termed as RML 2016.04C, uh, 
uh, which which is also composed of uh, around 150 uh, samples of uh, analog and digitally modulated signals so for a fair comparison i used their uh, cnn architecture uh, as it is as it had been proposed in their publication and train them uh, by myself uh, using the uh, respective data sets so that uh, uh, the comparison is uh, may seem uh, fair and uh, also i have made a slight change in the uh, dropout because uh, my classifier was uh, uh, performing good uh, uh, performing better uh, when the dropout rate was uh, changed so uh, in their paper they have used uh, the uh, dropout rate of uh, uh, 0 0.6 um, and i also uh, retrain their algorithm with the dropout rate of 0 0.5 to uh, actually uh, identify the difference of uh, these uh, dropout rates so the signals are uh, that they have that um, data set they have that they have com constructed are composed of signals that are simulated through a channel including number of uh, required steps such as random process for center frequency offset and additive void gaussian noise and multipath and uh, fading and then the output data is then stored in an n-dimensional array uh, which is suitable for uh, training any machine learning algorithm So here you can see is the workflow for my framework. Uh, both of these datasets are split into the train and test dataset. Uh, the splitting ratio is same as has been used in the uh, in their publication, uh, which is 80% uh, in the case of uh, RML 2016-04C and uh, and. 90% of training was utilized when uh, RML 2016.10A dataset was used. As I said earlier, I trained their CNN with the 0.6 dropout rate as well as 0.5 dropout rate just to see the observe the effect of uh, uh, the performance, and then I. Uh, train my proposed algorithm with the same configurations uh, keeping the dropout rate of 0.5 and 0.6 later after tra training the data the test data set is uh, or the validation data set you can say is uh, sent to the CNN and uh, all these predictions are uh, observed So this is the design of the classifier module that uh, I have proposed. In the original work, they had um, only two convolution and layers and uh, one dense layer. So uh, I, I realized that uh, by increasing the depth of uh, the classifier, uh, I may be able to get some better results, uh, which I uh, certainly did. And I increased the layers of uh, convolution uh, by and also changed the number of filters in them. Uh, originally, there were only two layers of convolution with the 128 and uh, 80 filters. So I increased one layer of uh, convolution with the 512 filters, uh, which included a zero padding and uh, uh, the activation function for each in each convolution as well as in the dense layer was ReLU. So this helped me in achieving some better results as compared to the original ones, which I'll show you in the later slides. Here you can see. Uh, this is the graph of uh, classification accuracy on 2016.10A um, dataset. Uh, the blue line here it shows the uh, drop uh, the uh, performance of uh, my proposed uh, algorithm algorithm with the dropout rate of uh, 0 0.5. Uh, 
uh, and it clearly outperforms the previously proposed uh, uh, CNN which is named as CNN 2 uh, with, with, with our, which are in uh, green, uh, which, sorry, which are in yellow and gray lines. This is the classification accuracy graph when the dataset 2016.04c was used. Uh, it can be seen that uh, there is no much performance improvement uh, like in the case of uh, previous dataset. Uh, this suggests that uh, there may be need of uh, proposing some different uh, uh, CNN architecture uh, to gain some better performances. And also the uh, effect of dropouts is uh, not much uh, as compared to the previous dataset. Both of these datasets were composed of signals that ranged from minus 20 db SNR to plus 20 db SNRs. Here due to limitation of slides I have not included the graphs for all the confusion matrices. Uh, this uh, certain uh, picture is from uh, the data set of 2016.8.10a. Uh, uh, you can see on the left hand side of the uh, figure uh, there are the SNR values are very low, uh, like from minus 20 to um, 0. And the classification performance of uh, uh, the proposed algorithm as well as the benchmark algorithm uh, was similar uh, and it was uh, uh, it could not uh, classify properly. Well, if we look at the right hand side of the graphs where the SNR values are high enough, uh, the classifier uh, tend to uh, classify the signals in much effective way and uh, the diagonal um, confusion matrix suggests that uh, and the classifier is classifying the classes of the uh, modulation scheme uh, to, to exactly what they belong to. Here is a comparison of uh, the performance of the benchmark uh, uh, network and the proposed network at 18 dB SNR uh, on the 2016.10a dataset. Uh, there is a slight improvement on the right hand side uh, where the QAM64 signals are classified uh, in a better way uh, as which were misclassified in the case of benchmark. However, the BPSK signal uh, in the uh, proposed uh, CNN is totally misclassified. So that means there is room for improvement and uh, with some uh, hyperparameter tuning, uh, this can be uh, uh, classified uh, uh, to the uh, respective class. This is a similar comparison, but for the different data set. And here it is. Uh, it can be seen that uh, the proposed algorithm manages to classify almost all the uh, modulation uh, signals to the respective classes. Even the BPSK signal, which were misclassified in the previous dataset, are now classified with much more efficiency uh, in this uh, uh, graphs. So now I would like to conclude my presentation that uh, in this work I proposed a modified convolution neural network architecture for the classification of modulation scheme and results also suggest that uh, the proposed framework performed better than the existing model in terms of accuracy. But since the I have increased the number of uh, convolution and dense layers in the algorithm, uh, the complexity has been compromised. So in future, I would like to propose a classifier uh, which uh, offers good classification performance by keeping the complexity of the model at the lower end. Thank you very much.